Happy right. Mother's Happy Day. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. <laughs> For anybody keeping it a secret, we won't tell. We know that there's know a that period where you don't tell people that you're expecting. We're expecting. <laughs> what? <laughs> she knows. She's doing great. That's great. That's great. We brought her along. She's been following me since the airport. <laughs> <laughs> what? That. Happy Mother's Day, though. Barry tells the story of a serial killer who uh, has lust to kill and his desire, almost sociopathic desire to avoid consequences for his actions has fueled season two of what Uprox calls one of the hottest new shows of the season. The AV Club and even Vulture have said that this awesome murder fest brings new meaning to the word murder, murder. John, you have no idea how accurate that is. The amount of podcasts I've the been Atlantic on. The Atlantic called it unmooring. The, yeah, the Atlantic called it unmooring. I'm here with Bill Hader. <laughs> you know him as a funny guy in SNL, but now he's a murderer on HBO. In the season finale, he killed someone you love. And now we're going to start with him. Bill, what's it like to what do James Carville? <laughs> Bill, skipping back a decade. <laughs> to the stuff I like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bill, you do Barry. Yeah. Um, fully ignoring that. <laughs> yeah, so you do Barry. Um, let's talk about uh, your SNL days. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, David Copperfield over here. Uh, I had one mug when we walked out, and I don't know what, you know, I don't know what he did, but we'll have to watch the tape. Uh, uh, I worked with Bill for um, about five years on Saturday Night Live uh, from my first episode as a writer. I'm talking to you like this because I know, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like I, don't, yeah. I don't remember it. Um, and from my first episode there, uh, I wrote sketches with Bill. I think we wrote a sketch, or at, le or at least one sketch, probably two or three every single week, and it was one of the happiest times of my life. Me too. Uh, when uh, Bill began doing press for Barry, he said that the show is about how he hated working at Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> and how he compared it to someone forced to murder uh, <laughs> a a and kill people. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's the no, that's, that's what people true. say. Yeah, no, yeah. that's what people say. Anyway, that's what people say. I know. Lauren's like, it's not about me, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Kusno, am I? Oh, he thought he thinks he's <laughs> no, Kusno? No, no, no. Yeah, of course not. Yeah. You know. Am I that acting teacher? No, you're the guy that makes me kill people. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. I know. <laughs> Um, I wanted to talk about uh, season two of Barry, first off, uh, which is extraordinarily good. And uh, um, did you know, uh, we, we did a panel for season one. We did. Yeah. Did you know what was, did you have the season two outlined at that when the finale was, of season one was cut near? You know what's funny is the panel um, that we did, that panel backstage, I got stuck in traffic. I'm like getting here. <laughs> stuck in yeah, traffic. Yeah, you just arrived. From I EW. just got off an airplane. Yeah. Literally, I just landed, and they were like, "Your show starts at you know five. and I looked down, and it's four, and it was that awful like JFK like slow taxi, <laughs> and then you stop, and you're like, "Oh, good," and then it starts moving again. And you're like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. Um, well, well, uh, looks we have like good news we, there's a plate in our gate. So I'm going to read you some poetry. <laughs> My poetry. <laughs> I've drawn some Being crude Being a pilot me. is beat. No. Um, but I, uh, and so, I, yeah, I just rushed here. That's why I'm drinking coffee. Um, but I was rushing to that panel a year ago, and in the car, I figured out what, like, basically the last 10 minutes of season two are. And I ran in and pitched it to Alec Berg, and you will never know this, you were standing right here, and as I, I said, I know how to end the season, and I started pitching, and Alec looked at you, and then put his arm around me and walked me away. <laughs> I was, was just like, there, like, eating celery, like, 
You were like, Why hey, do we man, walk hey, out hey, there? <laughs> what is this, L.A.? This is what? fucking this is great. great. Look at the palm trees. <laughs> wow, Century um, Boulevard. Wowie zowie. Pink's hot dog. <laughs> I'm going to stop there and be dis dissatisfied. Oh, this is fantastic. That's right. Whoa. We do L.A. material on 92nd Street in yeah. New York City. They we did amazing L.A. material. Yeah. The complaint I had. <laughs> yeah. Do you 92nd Street? Why? If you're going to do Obviously a fucking I bit, had a do complaint. it about anything between 80th. <laughs> And uh, I mean, I'll go 110th. I mean, whatever. The audacity like, so to mention a hot dog stand that was not Papaya King. You can, Papaya King and Nathan's at least. Nathan's in the airport, I'll give you that. While we are aware of Los Angeles, the disgusting <laughs> abundance of references. Um, so yeah, I came up at the ending of the show. That's where you came yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. very funny. And then, um, and then... Uh, you remember later on the panel? Okay, all right. You uh, had no socks on. Yeah. <laughs> The first time ever, I tried to wear a suit with the sneakers with no socks. Yeah, no socks. That was in Los Angeles. He got off the plane and they said, hey, daddy, lose those socks. Hey. Why am I saying daddy? Well, yeah. Where That's is this how they coming talk. from? That's how they talk. Hey, um, baby-o. What? No, they don't. They do in LA. In fact, below 50th, which you'll never know. No. Uh, yeah. But I wanted to, so I saw someone in like a magazine with the sneakers with no socks. We'll get back to him. And no. And so, so but I was sitting on the panel. No, like he was this, like this. And it, it was, was like, like, yeah. It was like, he goes, so Bill, and I. And mid question, I think Henry Winkler was talking, and I look over at you like, because I hadn't really said, it's like, nice to see you. And you're just going. <laughs> I think I actually went like, what is. What, you went. <laughs> <laughs> and then. And I think I had just asked a question that I thought, you know, I was like, I was like, so what's the night? I thought like I, I thought I'd like uh, uh, asked something that was like uh, in a, not inappropriate, but like asking to reveal too much about the finale. So then later I was like, was everything okay? And you were like, yeah, it's just I could see your entire leg. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Yeah. And, anyway, so I That's wore boots. That's how very happy. I wore boots. <laughs> Today I wore boots, but I'll wear a low shoe. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, that's nice. A white. Yeah, it's a Stan sneaker. Smith, a white, a white Stan Smith. Yeah, there's With like the only four things people who write comedy can wear, and and that's it. That's it. Adidas, New Balance, khaki jean. How much do you guys pay for this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, price. Ronnie and uh, the lady who's following me from the airport just said priceless. <laughs> I love, I love people that uh, are, uh, that it's about them. I yeah. Think, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's how I came up with the season two ending. Was, <laughs> was by being late? Was by being late. Did yeah. you come up with the season three ending today? Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's great. It's, just, it's at the newsstand at yeah, JFK? It's, yeah, it's at the newsstand at JFK. Do you have a right? bathroom? <laughs> Do you have a bathroom? Yeah. Uh, can I have a, a bag of uh, Milky Way Darks to eat? <laughs> I've had no dinner and I have to do a panel in 92nd Street. You have a bag of Milky Way Darks? This week on Barry. <laughs> uh, Ronnie and Lily, I wanted to ask you about, because oh, I have yeah. not seen you. This is episode of season two. Oh, yeah. Um, what the, what? Uh, how did you, let's start. Uh, besides the, uh, besides how, hilarious it was when, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm spoiling things, but you're adults, uh, <laughs> and the show's been out there and available, so just deal with it. Uh, when you walk into his uh, Taekwondo uh, trophy room, yeah. uh, and it, you just keep widening. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then the reverse shot, and there's uh, medals above yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was already fantastic. Um, what, how did you cast Lily, and what is that? Oh, what is that? That's a, that's a little girl. Okay. Uh, her name's Jessie. Her parents are stunt performers. And it actually, I came, the, we came up with that because she, um, season one, Wade Allen, the stunt coordinator, said, you know, I have this little girl named Jessie. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds terrible. Uh, her parents are stunt performers. And I went, <laughs> Um And then, uh, and he said, um, she's, uh, she's this amazing, st she could do anything. And he showed me this video of her doing all these stunts and karate and taekwondo. And he said, so if you need her, 
for any reason. I don't know why, but if you need, I have this little girl who can do all this stuff. So then we were writing ep season two. It's like a scene in Casablanca. Like, I know. It's I like, have a little girl. I have a little girl do karate. <laughs> no, 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 don't get up. I have passport, cigarettes, a little girl who can do karate. My name is Ronald. It is not my name. My name is Ronald. <laughs> Uh, but she said, uh, but she said, uh, uh, yeah, so then I, I went, I, I was like, okay, so then we started writing season two, and I have a notebook that I keep on the off season, just ideas, and I just wrote down, like, little girl beats up Barry in kitchen, <laughs> and I went, little girl, uh, Fuchs tries to get her, and she crawls up tree onto roof, <laughs> and that was it, and then, um, and then she, uh, and then we were writing, we kind of knew day one of writing that we wanted Loach to, again, more spoilers, Loach to uh, want Barry to kill Ronnie, the boyfriend of, her, of his ex-wife. And then we were like, well, what's that scene gonna be? And initially it was just gonna be the top of ep episode five, it was just gonna be the first 10 minutes was this hit. And then I was like, oh, whoa, what if his daughter is the little, is, is that girl? And we make it a whole episode. And you were like, where can I find the man that tried to sell me a girl last year. Yeah. And I was like, right he's like, <laughs> I understand you need me. <laughs> I knew you would call me. <laughs> was there, okay, I'm going to be like a dumb person, but how much of, I like someone that checks their phone mid panel. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all right. And it's like, what's that? Oh, phone. okay. Uh, all right. Stay here. Oh, God damn it. If I delete something hey, from wait. the box, is it but, a uh, Why can't I get Jay-Z stuff on iTunes anymore? <laughs> um, so that, I'm so sorry. It it's keeps buzzing. And I have three daughters, and I just have this, like, little girls, like, when you have, when your phone buzzes, you instinctively are just like, are they alive? Okay, good. <laughs> um, so I apologize for that. I do apologize for that. Can they text you, your daughters? The oldest one can now, and it's oh, just insanity. Does she do it a lot? The unicorn, 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 unicorn. <laughs> That can mean anything. <laughs> to her, it's a code. Yeah. I sent you five fucking unicorns. <laughs> I'm hungry. You I... gotta pick me up from volleyball, fuckhead. <laughs> five unicorns is I need to get picked up from volleyball. If the Yakuza is holding me, I will it's send you unicorns. three unicorns. Three unicorns and a shit emoji <laughs> means the Yakuza's holding me. All right, me. don't call the cops. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't call the cops. When you called the cops, it was two shit emojis. Oh, we could do this all day. We could and <laughs> we will. Uh, so, um, how, uh, not to be dumb, but what stunt, did she do all that shit? Yeah, she did all that stuff. Jesus yeah. Christ. So she's, uh, so she, um, I met her, and then I was like, hi, you know, and then she goes, I can't, uh, hi. Uh, hey, what was it like meeting her? Like, what were the first words you said? I said, uh, I was like, so, hi, I'm Bill, and uh, you're going to beat me up in this episode, and she started, like, laughing, and I was like, but it's not going to be me. Hey, what are you whispering? Now you're on your phone. I'm joking. I'm totally joking. I'm so joking. I'm so joking. She looked up like this. 92nd Street Y, please come in. All right. All, All right. right. All right. Two guys that look like Philip Roth. Yeah, Philip Roth. Right. All right. All right. All right. You Don't all, worry, everyone. Don't worry. All right. We're going to be really Dershowitz sarcastic. On speed dial. We can... We're going to be really sarcastic to her for a little bit. Um, no, but we... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Two guys like Philip Roth. Yeah. All right, show's over. Show's over. <laughs> they're, they're eating a lox and bagel. And bagel. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, they had no, ra they had no raisinets over at the bodega, so I didn't, I didn't get you raisinets. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> we, got a, we got a one. We got a, <laughs> we got a one. They only have one code. <laughs> We haven't done this since Dick Cavett was here. <laughs> um, um, all right, so... Uh, so Jesse said... Jesse said, uh, I'm excited. And then I said, well, how about, um, you know, she's going to do wire work and all that stuff. So I purposely wrote that episode so that um, Barry would have a mask on so it could be a stuntman. <laughs> and I wouldn't have to do any of those things. So it's this guy named Jake who's doing a lot of the stunts in it. And I 
it's very weird though to have like be dressed like that with the orange hoodie on and blood all over my face and like going, all right, sweetie, okay, so what we're gonna do now, you know? Oh, you're like, like <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but she, uh, she was awesome, like so sweet and like could do anything. And then, uh, and then, uh, uh, and then that guy, Daniel, who played Ronnie, Ronnie initially was supposed to be this short kind of like, fat, bald guy is written, and then the joke was that you would walk in and he was this great type of guy, but that doesn't exist. A, a small Taekwondo champion. A small, bald guy in his 50s who's really good at, who can like do flips and stuff. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and so I said, uh, all right, well, what's the next, and they go, well, we can bring this guy Daniel in, and then walks Daniel, who's like one of the most handsome people you've ever seen in our, our casting, our casting uh, director was like, I think we should have him. <laughs> I, I think he has the acting ability. I think um, he, I mean, when he hugs you, you feel hugged, you know, and it's like, all right, all right, easy, easy. Um, and then he was awesome. Yeah, he's a great guy, Daniel. Yeah. The, he, he's Bob Odenkirk's trainer. Well, let's it, unpack that. I mean, yo. Know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've always wondered, who trains, uh... Yeah, on the news tonight, a, u a universal question was answered tonight at the 92nd Street Y, who trains Bob Odenkirk? <laughs> The, the hey, universe who, folded in on itself. Who's today. Robert Smigel's trainer? I've always, <laughs> always wondered. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, who but teaches did, Larry Gelbart? <laughs> <laughs> who teaches Larry Gelbart weightlifting? <laughs> All right, uh, sorry, we're but, naming but, comedy writers that you wouldn't think uh, are, 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 uh, have great physical prowess, but of course uh, they might. But he, but Daniel was awesome, and then that, that was an episode that I kind of just wrote on my own and then brought it into the room and then kind of said, well, That's here's what I'm show. thinking, and I'm going to, you know, what do you guys think? And they were like, oh, it seems, yeah, oh, what, what the fuck? And then, um, <laughs> but they were into it. The only thing we came up with in the writer's room was the idea of uh, him gluing himself to the yeah. steering wheel. Oh, it went, yes. Yeah. That was the thing, because I initially had the little girl bite him on the face, and then just stay there, and they were like, why wouldn't he like struggle with her? And I go, well, I, he's, he's, you know, like when he's you're writing, a, you're like, yeah. he's like afraid, he's stunned. And they were yeah. like, Bill, <laughs> that's dumb. And, um, and then it was like, well, what if this, and then so I was like, well, I have this, the stitches breaking on Barry's back, what if uh, he put super glue on it? And everyone was like, ah. And then, uh, <laughs> that thing has always gotten the same reaction from the moment I pitched yeah. it. I was, they're like, nah, fuck you. It's and been then, on TV. <laughs> Here we are, post production It's already aired. It's no, it's mentioned. everybody. Ah. It's always, uh, like, the poor guy who, because that, what that is, is that's, that's, a, that's an actual just uh, guy's back that they put it on and they just move it. But the stitches and stuff are, and the blood is all uh, CG. So this poor guy, they brought him in because when you, you do a pass where you watch the episode with no digital effects and you kind of go, oh, I want this here, this here, this here. And then I was like, so yeah, here's what I want the stitches to be and I explained it. And they just looked at this junior animator guy. They're like, yeah, Jeff, you're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was like, oh, fuck. Oh, oh man, fuck oh, you guys. Fuck. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, but, um, and then that's not a tree. That's the only thing when she climbs up the tree, that tree is all animated. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's fake. She, uh, she's climbing up this like green, like rock climbing wall thing. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, well, fuck disappointing. You, I I what? Mean, <laughs> a little, no, I mean, I'm a big fan of the show, but I got to admit, it's a little disappointing. Dear 92nd Street Y. Yeah. Oh, right, I was right. at a Nick game and I saw Elliot Spitzer. <laughs> and I forgot to tell you this. And he what? was wearing a hat and a, like a like a fun jacket, like you know, like things are going great. You know, like. And I looked, I looked over at him. I looked over. I was like, I go to my wife. I go, that's Elliot Spitzer. And she's like, what? And I was like, that's Elliot Spitzer. And then I look over at him. He goes, oh. 
I remember I saw him at the like uh, when ha uh, when Seth did the White Horse White House White Horse, horse. White Horse <laughs> the White Horse the White, the White Horse Correspondence Dinner <laughs> when he made Trump. Um, he loves it when you say that. Um, but uh, er Elliot Spitzer was there, and I had done him on the show a couple of times. And I go, hey, um, hey, I, I appreciate you being cool with the impression. I know you're and not being mad about it or whatever. And he goes, who says I'm not mad at you? <laughs> and he was like, ah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. Uh, I was like, oh, OK, no, no. That's him putting his arm around me. <laughs> That's object work. All right, Nick fans, <laughs> let's go around, see who's here. Oh, my god. Oh, no. <laughs> Boo. Um, but I forgot to tell you I saw Spitzer, and I thought now would be a good time to do it. <laughs> that was the first thing we ever wrote. We did write. We wrote a thing that was called uh, when his, so John's first episode was uh, what, what's the guy the the swimmer Michael dude, Phelps. Michael Phelps. And so yeah, I don't follow sports. All right, I'm an artist. He just got off a plane. Just give me give me a just come on. You name uh, an Olympian, you know. So we wanted to do a thing called putting on the spits, where Andy was going to be Mark Spitz. Shut the fuck up. It's funny. <laughs> it was funny in 08. It's in 08, it killed. At so the Andy table. Sandberg was going to be Mark Spitz, and then I was Elliot Spitzer, like his like uh, band leader. Band leader. <laughs> it was Elliot Spitzer, and the Schizophrenics was the band on and, uh, the he goes, Mark how, Spitz show. And he said at one point, he said, uh, "What? How's that?" He goes, "How's that whole?" thing that happened. I go, it's a thing that will not die. Ba -ba -ba! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it and really, then, it did well at the table, and then they didn't. They, they, they did not like it. And then I wrote, <laughs> and then Seth Meyers and I wrote a Vincent Price sketch that, I think that night, and we were writing it, and we go, we should bring the new guy in, John. Hey, guys. Hi, everybody. And we go, we should bring John in and see, you know, if he's got anything for this. And so we were throwing on stuff, and I was like, oh, man, it'd be good if Vincent Price said something to Liberace. We're, we're, uh, I don't know it's if you Fred guys remember, Fred Armisen would play Liberace. And we go, hey, we, we, Liberace, whatever, and what can he say? And John was quiet the whole time, kind of nervous. And then John goes, oh, he could say, save your sassiest sides for your windowless bars. <laughs> I was like, that's like a perfect joke. <laughs> it's always good when it's like, what would Vincent then, Price say to Liberace? And, and then John You've been waiting 25 noticed. years to go, um, <laughs> <laughs> you remember, I, I remember another one that John did, but you remember what we never got on? We had a sketch that was, um, it was like James L. Brooks did a samurai movie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> James L. Brooks called, but what if you're wrong? But what if you're wrong, yeah. <laughs> and it was like a samurai movie. Yeah. And so it was us as Samurai, and uh, it was me and Fred, and I think Ben Stiller was hosting. And, um, and it was like, you know, honor, yeah. you know, death, you know. Um, and then it was like, uh, you know, uh, she's moving in, you know. <laughs> and it's from uh, writer director James, James L. Brooks. Brooks. So it's like, ow, da -na 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 -na, walking on sunshine. <laughs> And then, uh, and then I go, oh, we need something. And it was all stuff like, yeah, you know, we went on one date. Now I have a Netflix subscription. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. And then John pitched this line, which I'll never forget. You go, you go I go, what's a James O. Brooks type line? And you go, look, in the book of life, I just want to be in the acknowledgments. <laughs> I couldn't come up with that if my life depended on that. John said that, and I was like, all right, fuck you, man. You're the greatest comedy writer of all time. But How the hell did you come up with that? I forgot uh, about that. Oh my god, in the book of life, I just want to be an acknowledgement. It's made me laugh for like 25 minutes. I just remember we had a shot where you guys are walking through Central Park like with coffee as samurai with swords <laughs> in a walk and talk. And I think that's when that line And then the came woman, yeah, and then the geishas were uh, Oh yeah, fast walking. Fast, fast speed yeah. walking. And then one of them ran into a pole and she went, Whoa. And, and then, then at the end the, the, I cut a guy's head off. And so I have a guy's head, and I go, he was married. I did him a favor. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, I just think that, you know, uh, like two people like us can, can find love. And he goes, but what if you're wrong? And then it slams to the title. But what if you're wrong? And Lauren was like, no. 
We are not doing that. He, I remember he said uh, he was looking at it because he has a board like a general of cards that say every sketch name, and it was it said like samurai. He's also elbow. dressed like a general too. Yeah, yeah. People don't know that, but he dresses uh, <laughs> in a full Idi Amin general's outfit. And, <laughs> Never made it into any of the books, but yeah, epaulets. <laughs> Epaulet. he, uh, he adds a lot of medals yeah, that, yeah, like, that don't exist right, you know. for things that don't exist. Yeah, best at agriculture. You're like, yeah. okay, all right, all right, relax, relax. Um, <laughs> I remember he looked at that and he was like, I don't get why it's samurai, and I don't get why it's James <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, then I think we shouldn't do it. <laughs> Oh, that was one of my favorite things. There were, there, yeah, the, the, all the best things didn't get on. We did this one that we tried to get on a couple of times called um, the Kasems, which was uh, Casey Kasem. It was, it was, it was Dana Carvey was playing Casey Kasem. Yeah. And it was late at night, and he hears something, and he comes out, and he goes, "Who's out there? I'm Casey Kasem." <laughs> and then it's me, and I go. Dad, it's not a burglar or a raccoon. It's me, your son, J.C. Kaser. <laughs> son, get out of here. Dad, hear me out. Son, I never want to speak to you again. <laughs> no, Dad, hear me. I you remember know. he goes like, he's, he's like, I've heard you've run up debts all around the city and even burned down your last apartment. And how did you hear that, Dad? Here's a letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He, says, he goes, you always ask me, when are you going to move out of the house? When are you going to get a job? And what recording artist had more number one hits? <laughs> the answer, Mariah, Mariah Carey. With a lift. 17. <laughs> but seriously, Dad. Uh, and it's like, you must have mistaken our house for a pile of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> and you it was the funniest. It was the hardest I had ever laughed riding with John. I think we were... Right, yeah. we were both crying, laughing, just doing Casey Kasem voices. For we a while. couldn't get a sentence out, which was he goes, uh, he goes, Dad, there's bad guys after me, and he's like, Son, if they come at you, I'll run at them like a the Lebanese torpedo. torpedo. <laughs> <laughs> they come at me, I'll fly at them like a Lebanese torpedo. That's a really, really jarring, thank you for laughing, because we did it and no one did. No and... one laughed. But then John did a show at Largo, he does these great shows at Largo, and he was oh, in, in LA. Yeah. And he came out and he goes, I have this sketch, um, and he was doing stand-up, and he goes, I have this sketch that I did, the Kasems, and um, you know, with, uh, me, with uh, Bill and Dana and Kristen Wiig played the mom, and it's like, so I want to play it up here with the audience, so who wants to play Kristen in this? A uh, young oh, yeah. girl got up, and, okay, so you'll play Kristen. And to play Dana and Bill, uh, Dana, Bill, and me and Dana Carvey came out. <laughs> and, everybody, and then the girl was like. <laughs> <laughs> and then we did this sketch with this audience member, and it was really fun. But I just, like, the last time it had been performed, it was to silence. Like, pure silence. silence. And like, I could, you could hear my feet walking. I was like. <laughs> yeah, you could hear, like, the gate close. Yeah, you'd be like. Dad. <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> And that awful thing where I'm looking in Dana Carvey's eyes and he's looking at me like, this is, I, this is not going to make it to air, buddy. Yeah. We, later, uh, that same episode, I had a sketch that, uh, you ha that we worked on together, which was a celebrity crisis line where uh, it was, a, we, we would call these impression parades. Um, and, uh, you know, they're not the highest art form, but you got 90 minutes to fill, okay? So... <laughs> Uh, it was all these different celebrities answering a crisis uh, phone line, and uh, it was an excuse to have Dana Carvey do Mickey Rooney, and which you know the public was really clamoring for. And yeah. anyway, right after the sketch ended, I was leaving. It, it died, and it was it on was air. Terrible. It, it played terribly. Total and silence. I was leaving the control room, and our 93-year-old lighting designer, Phil Himes, <laughs> went, "Not your best work." And <laughs> <laughs> and he was. He was 93. Phil walks. He's like a ghost. Like, he kind of just, like, if he was here right now, he would just do a slow cross. And then he would fix one gel, and you'd all go, yeah, that's better. Yeah, that makes sense. And then I'd be like. I was like, tw he was 93. I was like 27 and crashing from Adderall, so we were in the same place emotionally. So I was like, why, Phil? What was wrong with it? You know, like. <laughs> He's like, don't he went, talk to me like that, John. Yeah. I remember Phil Himes went, you know what was wrong with that sketch? None of the people sounded like the people. 
<laughs> I did Alan Alda in that sketch. I did pretty good Alan Alda. You did a good Alan Alda. I did okay Alan Alda in that sketch, but he did, uh, and Kristen did, uh... Everyone was good. Fuck Phil, man. <laughs> Oh my God! One time uh, we had a pe we had a piece where Fred was playing Obama, and it was like a Christmas in the White House. So we had to walk to the window, and Seth and I were going like, um, you know how we're like in front of the uh, fake Oval Office, and Phil, we're, we're talking to, like we're just talking out loud. We're like, yeah, but the White House should look like like there should be light on the windows. And so, like, it doesn't, you know, it does, I know it doesn't reflect, but, like, there's light on the windows, and Phil walked through, and he went, I lit John Kennedy in the White House, and then walked out. <laughs> <laughs> Barry is on HBO. Yeah. Uh, is there anything yeah, you want to Yeah, no, say man, no. Right. You guys want to go, you guys want to ask questions? questions? Yes. Uh, we're going to open it up to questions. I think microphones have to be put in place. Um, oh. oh, they are there. All right. Does anything happen or it just starts? Well, where's the mic? mic there? Oh, it's right up here. Okay. And there's one right up here. Wow, you guys get really you close. You can form to us. Uh, single file lines, and we'll raise the house. Oh, lights. whoa! Oh my gosh! Oh. Look at all these people. Holy shit! Hi. <laughs> I only can see to here. This is crazy. Hi, everybody. Oh um, man, I hope this has uh, been worth your. Oh man, I didn't realize anything. Oh, did you not know there was? I a did balcony? not see the balcony. No, I'm blind. Yeah. Oh man, I feel bad. Um. No, I feel terrible. What about the? Uh, what about when we did Casey Kasem for 20 minutes? They were like, I went to this thing about Barry, and I learned all about these sketches that never made it to air. Yeah. Uh, why don't we start over here? Uh, hello, what's your name? Hi, my name's Noah. It's Noah. Um, and I'm, I love the show, and I was just wondering if John would ever possibly guest star. No. <laughs> just like, no. Maybe, no. Maybe, maybe Barry uh, killed No, I, I know what you're gonna pitch, no. <laughs> just stop it. I don't wanna give him a bigger head that he already has. The guy's, he's the best stand up in the universe. I can't give him that. No, he is. He's the greatest stand up comedian in America right now. I can't. <laughs> I want people watching us, not John. Noah. Noah, get the fuck back to your seat. Well, uh, hi, what's your name? Hi, my name is Andy. Um, Andy, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My question is for Bill. So you've been really open about like working with like your anxiety on mm -hmm. SNL and that type of thing. What would you suggest for someone who wants to go down a similar career path, but it's like managing those similar things? Um, it's hard. John can also attest how anxious I would get before things. I would get very, very scared. And I have panic attack yes. disorder as well. So We, yeah. we, we both are very <laughs> panicky. No, I mean, in all seriousness. No, in all seriousness, we have like real, like, um, it's a thing you kind of just manage your whole life. I do TM, I do meditation. I, I honestly, it's like you do, it's like all the kind of fun things like I don't drink anymore yeah. <laughs> and like all these things you have to like really like to work like exercise not to like look better but just to like not be a basket case <laughs> um this is sugar what happens when you hit 40. yeah <laughs> uh, sugar and caffeine i had a i before stand up i don't re i really can't touch those and i've i've also i take wellbutrin and i'll, I'll take the occasional clonopin if i'm feeling very yeah uh, i take lexapro uh, yeah <laughs> But it, really, it, it, by the way, uh, well, Butrin, no applause, Lexapro. <laughs> well, Butrin people are like, oh, hey, man, we got to figure out what Lexapro's doing. We got to get, <laughs> oh, shit, guys. Dr. Stein. Dr. Stein. I want you to switch it to Lexapro. <laughs> um, but no, in all seriousness, uh, it, 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 I mean, to be like this, like loose with my friend John up in front of all these people, just then when I saw that balcony up there, I was like, <gasps> And it was a, and, and it almost was just saying it, just going, oh my gosh, look at all those people. That alleviates it in a weird way. Yeah. Like, oh man, I'm, I, I got to a place where I remember my, I had a therapist, and I was like, what do I do? She's like, just say it. And I remember just turning to John before I would have to do update or something and be like, I am so nervous. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And that, like, you're saying it, you're admitting it, you don't. And then a thing is, Jeff Bridges told me a story when he hosted. He goes, he could, he could tell I was nervous. 
and he said he had worked with Robert Ryan on uh, Iceman Cometh when he was a young guy, and, and he said uh, Robert Ryan would, would break out into a sweat before every take. And he said, why, why do you do that? And he goes, oh, I'd be really afraid if I wasn't afraid, you know? And, and that, that you should use that. And as Jeff Bridges said, you know, that's, uh, that's your buddy, man. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, put your arm around it, man. It just fucking, you know, it's like, don't, don't worry about it. Thank okay. you. Hope that answered your question. Try, uh, I guess, Lexapro. Okay, try Lexapro. <laughs> Hi. Oh, God. Hi. Hello. Um, We're John and Bill. What's your name? <laughs> I'm Emily. Um, very good. So, on the anxiety thing, I'm a very anxious person. Totally unrelated. Anyways, so my question has escaped me. Yeah? Hold on. All right. So, What's your question? for Bill. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, you were saying how, like, with uh, SNL and, like, live performances, you get really anxious, yeah. but... Which one is more nerve-wracking, like being a director, producer, writer, lead actor in Barry, or like live performances? Like which? Is a live performance in SNL by far. Really? Like every time we would do stuff on Barry, they would they would be like, you know, I like that Ronnie Lilly episode. I directed it, I wrote it, I'm starring in it, and there's all these things, and there's fight choreography and everything. And everybody, and the producer Aida Rogers would say, Hey, at any moment you need a break, let me know. And I'm like, Oh, compared to SNL, this is nothing, you know. <laughs> Just the live performance, just going out there and not knowing, and going out with a thing that you weren't, um, a lot of it's confidence, and, 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 and you get your confidence the more you get up and do it. It's like doing stand-up or, you know, when I would go do uh, improv shows, and you know, you do improv shows, you stand at the back of the wall, and everybody, so I would just stay at the wall and not want to, and be like, and they'd be like, they would call me out, and I'd be like, Oh, you know, um, because a lot of it is a fear of failure, of looking stupid, of looking silly, or and 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 so you you have to get my voice is like getting louder and louder. Uh, but uh, you have to. Find, I was lucky enough to find a guy like John that when I would perform in one of our sketches, it was kind of like I'm just performing to John. Like I just want to make John laugh. Oh, thank you. You know, honestly, like <laughs> if you saw me. Like, those Stefan sketches, that's me trying to make John laugh. Do you know what I mean? That's me like, that's like a weird, that's like a weird, it's like he's making me laugh and I, it's like a, the most personal thing between two friends that's happening in front of the Ten nation, people, yeah. you know? But it is like him messing with me and me laughing and then me trying to do stuff to make him laugh and, and just because I know I can fail in front of him and at least in my face he won't make fun of me. No, I think we were always happiest if just we, if we, like, we, there was a moment we both knew was yeah. between us and great. Or like yeah. with James Carville, you would sometimes yeah. just mid, mid uh, update feature just start dealing cards and then shuffle. Yeah, that's solely so John would yeah. start laughing. I'm yeah. like, dealing cards, and I come off, and he's like, what the <laughs> hell was <is> that? <laughs> but thank, you. thank you. Hello. Hello, my name is Kyle. Hello, Kyle. So my question is, well, Barry, I'm continuously surprised by the show because things that I think are going to turn into like major plot points or season arcs are resolved very quickly, whereas I feel like other shows would stretch them out much longer. So in the writing process, how much of Barry is figuring out whole season arcs and how everything ties together, and how much of it is writing an episode or two and then saying, okay, where do we go from here? You should um, have been the moderator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kyle should have been moderator. <laughs> hey, did you hear that, Bill? That question's great. Uh, I'm trying to help out my friend John here, right? Like, yeah. no, you can moderate my thing in the 90 seconds too. Yeah, what? It's like, been I, rough lately. Uh, is it cool if I just talk about us? <laughs> hey, uh, I saw Spitzer. Hey, uh, I haven't seen this show. Uh, um, uh, to answer your question, uh, no, we tend to, what I do is uh, we go up and we kind of, we outline everything way ahead of time. And then in the outlining process, you kind of, to your point almost, will kind of go, um, and Alec Berg and Liz Sarnoff, to our right, is really good at this, will say, shouldn't that resolve itself now? Why, are we, why do we push that off? Like, like a good example is Loach telling Barry, I want you to kill Ronnie. I initially had that in my outline in like episode seven, right? 
And then Liz Sarner's like, let's do it in four. Like, why are we waiting three, you know? And I think it's we as viewers are that way. That, that has more to do with us as, as, as viewers. Like, I watch so much when I watch TV shows and I'm like, oh, you guys are treading water. Like, let's go, you know what I mean? Now, that might fuck us later when we're like, wow, we've burnt all these things. <laughs> But um, you'll see in the, ep I mean, if you guys, the episode that's on tonight, we had a massive, massive uh, talk about something to your point that happens in that episode that you're like, wow, the show's not going to be the same anymore after this, you know? So, uh, so, no, it's true, it's true. So you got a, you have a TiVo, right? <laughs> TiVo? TiVo. <laughs> the 2004? <laughs> We're going to go see Million Dollar Baby after this. Um, but, uh... But no, seriously, that's, it's, it, it's rarely do we write anything and then go, wait, where do we go from here? It's, 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 I, mean, I guess the biggest thing is what would the characters do? What would Barry do? What would they honestly, you know, what would, what would happen, you know, if that makes any, I hope that answered your question. You. Hi. Hello. Uh, first, I want to thank you guys so much for doing this. This has been great. So thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Thank you. What's your name? My name's Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. So I wanted to ask Bill, I know you're a big cinephile, lover of movies and all of that. So in Barry, what are some of your cinematic influences that have helped you kind of steer this ship? Um, well, I mean, I like, I don't know. I, it, weirdly, it's kind of more literature. I know that sounds so pretentious, but it is more like reading. It's, it's uh, like people like Tobias Wolf and George Saunders and um, Alice Munro and short story writers like that and and then um, and uh, and then but film filmmaking wise we always just I, I look at a lot of old movies I love old movies and so I always liked you know like a director like Carol Reed or someone like that how you would watch a scene and then you just start counting the setups of like the camera set I'm like wow there's only like three camera setups in that and it's so uh, dramatic and that's all you need and so I photo board a lot of stuff and then you kind of go back and this is gonna sound really pretentious, but I got really into the director Anjay Vida, who did like um, a generation and Canal and Ashes and Diamonds and all that. So I was I was just telling my DP Paolo Widobro, I was showing her like Ashes and Diamonds, like let's do something like this, and then we do it and everything gets done, and then you show it to people and they're like, oh, it looks like the Coen Brothers, you know? <laughs> so I was like, the Coen Brothers are great, don't get me wrong, but I was like, oh, no, let's go, but kind of like Anjay Vida though too, right? <laughs> no, Coen Brothers though. So. Um, and clearly, we like Kurosawa because we did that huge joke at the end of last season where the, the uh, what do you call it? Yeah, the police chief know, knows all the Kurosawa references. <laughs> yeah, that made us laugh really hard. Oh, the Kurosawa uh, police chief thing? That was, Alec Berg wrote that because he knows I'm a big Kurosawa nerd, and he was, again, like, like, uh, like John trying to make me laugh. And I was sitting in the back watching Gary Krause, who's on Documentary Now, which we work on, and, and he, he's great. And uh, Gary's hilarious, and Gary just, yeah, where he's like, uh, the two men much like Yojimbo. <laughs> and then the verse where it was like, uh, where can we see Yojimbo? And he says, well, I don't have that information in front of me, but uh, was that the only film Kurosawa made? Oh, God, no. He made uh, Ron, he made Rashomon, he made, that was totally to make me. Is there, right. just to piggyback off these questions, is there like a movie that you haven't seen? <laughs> like, I mean that, I mean that. Yeah, there's a lot of movies. No, there's a lot of movies. Okay, right. is there a, is there a considered a great movie that you haven't seen? Oh, um, I don't know. I try to, I don't know, name, what's a great movie? Like, well, that's, come on, everybody name one. Let's see how I do. <laughs> No, uh, I just remember no, Kathy Boudreau, who you uh, yeah. you grew up with and, and write with, yeah. uh, was we were once talking about Werner Herzog and uh, we were talking about Agira. Yeah. And uh, he was like, "Yeah, man, I remember when you uh, showed up at high school. You just uh, the night before seeing Agira: Wrath of God, and you were yeah it really affected you." And I was yeah. like, "You saw that in high school?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I well, it, I felt yeah, I, but that you know, I no friends. That's. <laughs> <laughs> But you've gotten into like deep, uh, and, I'll, and I'm very sorry. Well, you've gotten into like deep kung fu trivia with people, yeah, and like w and bested them. Ah, uh, well, no, but, like, but that's like it's a weird thing. Like you talk about it, like with Edgar Wright or okay. Quentin or those guys, and then you kind of go like, I feel. Uh, that's who I meant. That's who you bested. <laughs> yeah, but you also go like, 
but that means we were kind of lonely just in our rooms. There's like an implied loneliness to it. But uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I, I'm sure there's something. I haven't seen How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. And <laughs> that's why I'm people love. I, I, Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Ali. Ooh, very loud. I'm Ali. Hey! Uh, hello. Sammy uh, Agar asked a question. Hey! <laughs> Uh, John, I know you are a very big musical theater person, and I'm curious. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you were in front of a mic stand, what karaoke song would you sing? I do not sing. I do not sing. You do not sing. No, I do not sing. Um, I, I cannot, I, I know I cannot sing, and I, I live with someone who reminds me that I cannot sing. <laughs> and, um, yeah, uh, yeah. I, it, I really, I was, uh, yeah, I can't. Neither sing. of us can really sing, and then it was always a thing when I was when I was on the show, a new writer would write in that I could sing. Yeah. It's like Bill comes in and sings one line, and it was always like a, <laughs> it's not gonna work. <laughs> and everybody on the show can sing, uh, can except sing for except for John, and so I think that's another reason why John and I were. <laughs> yeah. John was like, hey man, come here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like songs, but I can't sing too well. I can't sing either. I can't sing too well either, buddy. But uh, the two times that I hosted and did musical things, it was like talk singing within a range that I could do to a degree that you're like, oh, at, at worst, that's just kind of like funny bad. And because it'd be like, da 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 da. You know? And then my wife was like, stop doing that. You are tricking people that you can sing. Yeah, it's not. So, but it's good. But you know, um, I never did karaoke. Sometimes at SNL after parties, I'd do karaoke, and people would get up there and like. Gone. Yeah. I'm I out. I'm out. Yeah, the minute they're like, karaoke, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> there was Mick. It's better if it's bad, though. No, no. No, it, it doesn't. It would be like high stakes. Like one time, Mick Jagger was playing with the Foo Fighters. He played. At the after party. At the after party, and we went downstairs. Could get up and there's Mick Jagger sing. playing with the Foo Fighters. He started playing Bitch. Yeah. And to show how jaded we were at that point at SNL, we were talking outside. He starts singing Bitch, and it's literally me and John and three of our friends, and John and I go, this is kind of loud, let's go inside. <laughs> <laughs> That's how jaded we got. It was yeah, like, oh, Mick yeah. Ja ugh. Yeah, let's like, go inside, guys. Jesus. <laughs> Can I smoke inside? No? All right, fine. Anyway. <laughs> Our thing got cut tonight. Yeah, we were probably mad saying got cut. Hello. Hello, my name's Tierra. Um, Hi, Tierra. So I'm from Oklahoma, and I know oh, you are too. How did you get out of Oklahoma? <laughs> oh no, no, I. My well, I'm, I, I'm I from live Tulsa. In Stanford. I'm live. I'm from Stanford, but I was born in Oklahoma. Oh. I was raised in Tulsa. That's where I'm from. Yeah, yeah. I know. Wow. Uh, <laughs> but um, I know that's such a Tulsa way of being. Yeah, like, I know. Hey, that's where I'm from. <laughs> Whoa, you from yeah. there? Oh, boy. Um, so my question is, did you have any like certain experiences when you were home, like when you were younger, that kind of led to inspiration in like, your creative endeavors? Not specifically Barry, but like any point in your I career? think just being in Tulsa where there wasn't a lot. I didn't, yeah. like, I played sports until I was like eighth grade. And then if you don't play sports in Tulsa, like what else are you going to do? <laughs> and everybody like started a band or did a lot of drugs or both. <laughs> And I would just, and I had terrible grades, because I, and I went to Sound Warehouse, this, uh, which was a, uh, where they rental, yeah, movie rental place, and I would just rent everything. And I worked at the first Borders in Tulsa. <laughs> <laughs> Borders Books, when Infinite Jest came out. Uh, <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> All these assholes coming these up, and I'm like, bandanas. you're not gonna read this asshole. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, well, he has a lot of Chicago relatives, too. Yeah. Chicago's Artie, easier to get out of. John. Your dad's from Chicago? My dad's from Chicago. And how many brothers does he have? He has like eight. He has yeah. like eight. Oh, my God. And they're all like, Artie, John, Ronnie, Maddie. <laughs> I'm Randy Ron. I'm Randy Ron and Maddie and Andy. But I once asked Bill, I was like, so where would you go in Tulsa if you wanted to like have fun? And he said, Dallas. <laughs> It was like, if we needed to see a, any concert, we had to drive. We had to drive five hours to Dallas. 
Well, I'm glad you, you know, yeah. you're out of there. Hey, you're in, you're, in the, you're in the coolest part of New York. Hey, now you're at 92nd Street. Why? Hello. Hello, I'm Olivia. Hi, Olivia. And um, my question was just like, what's everybody like on set? Because I really like the whole cast together. Oh, everyone's awesome. You know, Henry Winkler is the nicest human being on the planet. <laughs> Henry has a very hard time playing a mean person. So every time I'm like, I need you to go at them harder or be a bit cruel, he'll be like, but so this man's an asshole. <laughs> and, uh, and we had a moment that's in episode uh, eight with Henry and while we were shooting it and, and he goes, he looks around and he goes, uh, uh, Bill, this is, uh, I've never told you this, we're on stage 19 at Paramount. He goes, I never told you this, but this is where we did Happy Days. <laughs> and the whole crew went, what? <laughs> and so we stopped production for an hour and he walked us around where everything was and where his dressing room was. And he literally showed us where the jukebox was and all those things. And then I was like, get back to work. <laughs> um, Anthony Kerrigan, who plays Noho Hanks, one of the nicest guys in the world. He, uh, He's, uh, he's one of those guys, he's just super sweet and he kind of just owns his character now. We don't tell him kind of anything anymore. <laughs> I had a line where I had to say, um, I go, am I, in episode two this season, I go, Hank, am I evil? And his line was, he was just supposed to be like, no, I don't think you're evil. And he improvised, no, do I not tell you that enough? Of course you <laughs> He also wore no socks to that panel. He also wore no socks yeah. to the panel as well. That's so why I was like, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Um, and Sarah Goldberg, who plays Sally, is wonderful. She's awesome, wonderful actress, and really cool. And, and, and you'll see in tonight's episode, when you guys don't go and watch, hopefully watch it, uh, they, uh, she does something in tonight's episode that's like we're just showing her off. But it's like this, she's, yeah, she does this amazing moment. Um, but everyone's cool, man. I, I just, uh, Stephen Root, Jesus. Stephen Root. <laughs> Stephen Root. Steven Root is like, he's just the consummate pro and he's been working forever. So you just, you can't, just working with him, he just keeps you on your toes. Like you'll be doing a scene and he'll do it happy and then he'll do it angry and then he'll do it sad and then he does this and I'm constantly just reacting to whatever it is he's doing. So he's, um, yeah, the best. Thanks. Hi. Hi, um, my name's Lilia. Um, my question for Bill is, um, you have mentioned a bunch of times that you are really into true crime. Oh, yeah. And, like, snapped and forensic files and oh, stuff. Yeah. I was wondering if that has, like, influenced your writing. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I'm not making Barry, like, a genre, like, a crime genre movie or, or book. It's make, taking it more into real life, you know? And so John and I are both obsessed Sick people. with true crime. <laughs> There's do, the, a, uh, do the British show. Oh, that's awful. Oh, is it? Oh, the, the, there's a British one. Don't watch British true crime shows. Because I go, too, oh. Is this too inappropriate? No, 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 it's fine. It's yeah. funny, but it's terrible. Yeah. So I go, oh, I'm going to watch a British true crime show. So I hit it, and the first thing it said was, <laughs> John, John laughed at it. He goes, they, this is awful. I'm just favorite. He goes, I took her out, they took her out to the woods, violated her, doused her with petrol, and set her alight. <laughs> It's the, like was, for, his, for his crimes, he got an unprecedented two years in prison. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, whoa, I'm out. The longest sentence ever in Britain is like 19 years. <laughs> no, but we had, we had the, there's Dennis Murphy. If you go on Dennis Murphy on Dateline two day, two week, two, a week ago, there's this guy who had a home invasion and the, the people wore like these, these microphones that made their voices all like this, you know? <laughs> And the guy was blindfolded, he's got, and he goes, so they had these, these, they, they, these voices I couldn't understand. And then Dennis Murphy took out the thing, and he goes, they, did they sound like this? <laughs> and the guy goes, yeah, the guy's terrified. <laughs> the guy's like, yeah, don't, like, stop that. Like, what? <laughs> Worst moment of my life. Hi, my name's Maddie. Hi, Maddie. Um, so tonight's episode is titled The Audition, so I was wondering what the craziest audition stories you guys have had. 
Both of uh, you. I've had auditions. I've had uh, an, uh, someone stop me and say, um, you know this is a comedy, right? <laughs> that, was, that was a kick in the nuts. I, uh, I auditioned for a Starburst commercial. Uh, this was, I want to say, Wednesday. <laughs> this was uh, like in 2004. And I, I walk in and they go, uh, so it's on the beach, so if you don't mind taking your shirt off. And I went, I'm going to go. And I <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Julie. Hi, Julie. Um, so Barry has a very similar narrative structure to Breaking Bad. You probably hear that all the time. Um, where it's very, um, very organized. And so I was wondering, do you have like tent poles where you want the series to go? Um, a little bit. I mean, it's so funny you say that because Alec and I went to this Game of Thrones with the, ba the Battle of Winterfell. They had like a giant screening of it at Mans, and we went to it. And it was like every cool, like it was like us and the guys who do Stranger Things and all the games. All these people were at this thing, and uh, Vince Gilligan was there. And I felt the need to go over and go, "Hi, I feel like I owe you money," because <laughs> uh, <laughs> Barry does have a similar like guy going between two worlds and that you know thing, but trying to make it funny at least. But um, and he was like, "No, man, I love it. Now we talking about." It. <laughs> uh, but uh, but. No, I mean, we, when Alec and I first sat down and talked about the idea, it was like a hitman who's dissatisfied in his life, so he becomes an actor, and then blank. And we haven't gotten to the then blank yet. <laughs> Hello. Hi, I'm Tommy. Hi, Tommy. Um, I was just wondering, like, in the last episode, when you flipped the table, and you like kind of transform, Barry transforms into another person. Like, it's kind of similar. You transform when you're doing an impression. It's like a new person. Is it like a similar process, you're acting and like doing an impression? Like, are you doing an impression of Barry? Oh, I see what you're saying. No, I mean, it's interesting. A lot of times when you're doing it, acting, you are kind of thinking about people in your life. You're projecting in your head a person that you know or something you've seen. Do you know what I mean? Or, or something like that. Um, but, in, 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 you know, that's so funny because that scene was so intense, but it was right after Thanksgiving and, like, everyone was in a really good mood and so we were just, like, <laughs> laughing and having a good time and shooting this really awful scene. But um, that, you know, you kind of, yeah, you, that's why I don't like watching myself is because you kind of have this projection of, like, what you're playing and what you sound like and everything and then I see it and it's like, what? You know? <laughs> I don't go on social media, but Alec Berg and I were drunk uh, a long time ago and when I drank, and he was like, hey, we should go and see what people think about the show as the night it premiered. And the first thing I saw was, Bill Hader can do so many voices, why does he choose to speak with that one? <laughs> I was like, "Hello." I just stop drinking. Hi there. Uh, first of all, I've heard from people uh, who've worked with both of you guys, Documentary Now and Unburied, that you two are outstanding to work for. Oh, cool. Uh, super, super nice people, nice guys. Oh, cool. We paid this talented. woman 75 and, <laughs> and, and they don't say that about everybody, but you oh, guys are thanks. amazing. That's very nice. Thank you. So Thank I'm so thrilled you came tonight. Um, so Bill, uh, tell me you're not a method actor, right? No. Uh, what did you do for research? Uh, I didn't kill, is that? Yeah. I, you wanna know if I killed anybody? I didn't kill anybody. Uh, no, I mean, there wasn't a lot. I mean, the one nice thing about doing this show is that because I'm writing and directing everything, it's like SNL, you know, it's like we're doing so many different things that you kinda, and you do that on your show too. Do you ever find, like, when you're doing a lot of things, you don't, the acting for me is always like the last thing I'm thinking about in a weird way that's helpful because you're not in your head and you're kinda just, be more in, uh, operating on an instinct. I talked to Jason Bateman about this on Ozark, and I was like, hey man, do you, like, do you, I feel really self-conscious that I don't, like, prep enough, and he's like, oh, I, I forget that I'm in costume half the time. I forget that I'm supposed to act, you know? But in a weird way, it's helpful, for me at least, to kind of, like, I think if I wasn't doing those things, there might be a tendency to over-prepare 
and like get it down to every little nano thing, you know what I mean? Um, so as far as like, like anything you see me doing with guns and things like that, that's Wade Allen, the guy who, the little, who has the little girl, um, uh, my stunt coordinator. <laughs> and he'll be like, all right, here's how you use this gun. I'm usually finding out like right then. I don't really, I'm a bad actor. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi, I'm Tammy. Hi, Tammy. You guys are my Mother's Day gift. Oh, oh sorry. There you um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a bummer. <laughs> no, it's awesome. Oh, thanks. So I, my question is, of all the hats that you wear, writer, comedian, actor, director, which would you readily give up and which do you enjoy the most? Oh, I don't think I could give up. It, that's a tough one. It's a, I, I don't think I can give up any of them. I like them so much. Yeah, and they're all kind of one job to me. That's how I stay sane. <laughs> it's like it's one job you're doing all those things. But if I saw them as like individual things, can I have a follow -up? yeah. What's after Barry? Do you have a... Oh, do I have anything going on after Barry? No, I'm in It. I'm in the sequel to It, which is super scary. <laughs> I saw some of it and I was like, oh. Damn it. And Andy Machete, the director, is hilarious. He's like, he's like one of the greatest guys of all time, but he's always like, yeah, man. Like, he, he directs on a big God mic. Uh -huh. so he'd be like, and I can't act scared, because when I'm scared and nervous, I smile. <laughs> so it's like. <laughs> he's like, all right, Pennywise is coming after you, man. Hey, <laughs> hey, Bill, stop smiling, man. What are you doing? Come on. <laughs> hey, Penny, Bill, why are you fucking smiling, man? And I just I do, like, I, and like, I don't realize that I'm smiling. I like the direction of, okay, Pennywise is coming after you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, turn around. Oh, yeah, that's Pennywise. Okay, he's going to kill you, man. No, you got to be scared. in real time. Yeah, he's oh, like, whoa. Fuck, no. Hey, that's not good. <laughs> hey, man, I think your guy's going to die, man. Oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. Um. Burn. Oh. To say, to say the thing, oh. <laughs> We're gonna bring um, a big thing so, out So, so, John, I made a tarot deck based on your stand-up. Oh, cool. And, um, I have it with me. <laughs> this is the last moment of your life. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I want to take the last known picture of John Mulaney. <laughs> um, so, so I made this tarot deck based on, um, your three Netflix specials, the one you have on Spotify, and a few other things. So, Bill, if I were to make a tarot deck based on I feel like you guys should work. do this privately, like over dinner. <laughs> I feel like you guys should do this privately over dinner, maybe. <laughs> right? <laughs> no. I, I do, I do want to make sure I get to everyone, but I have so much to talk to you about. Um, <laughs> I, but I, I, I would, uh, I don't mean to cut off your question, but uh, I, I would, do I get to keep the tarot deck? Or, or do you, you, it's your property. No, it's yours. Okay. If you want it. No, I, that's, I, I can't, then I made no. a Cards Against uh, Humanity expansion pack on your stand-up, too. Okay, I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> but I will say this, okay? And you can, and you might think Does anybody bullshit. make me a tarot? <laughs> Every other question has been for you! <laughs> Uh, but I went, I got my tarot cards read when I worked at, at Saturday Night Live, okay? And, and I went into this, uh, uh, it's, I was, what? I was at a, <laughs> when I did was you at a this? bar mitzvah. Uh, no! And they had a tarot reader, okay? <laughs> what about this story don't you get? I was at a daytime function. <laughs> But, uh, okay, so, this is real quick. <laughs> so, on the theory that, that okay, so, this, the, the, woman's, the woman had very light eyes. <laughs> she lays out a card, and I was thinking about leaving Saturday Night Live to do stand-up, okay? She lays out a good, card, she goes... very good that you did that. Yeah, she goes, yeah, I, I, I'm glad I did. She goes, uh, she goes I, okay, um, there's a tower, you, you're in a tower, and, uh, and you, need to, you, you need to go, and you're standing. And I was like, got it. <laughs> so, you know, if you're looking for advice, daytime bar mitzvah uh, tarot card readers. He'll get to you about your, oh, he just, there's a lot of, uh, what do you want to do? I don't know. Uh, well, you had a question, and I kind of cut you off. I'm sorry. 
Um, so, Bill, if I were to make a tarot deck based on your work, should I stick with just Barry or branch out to other things? Is it weird that I don't want you to make <laughs> <laughs> Is that weird that I don't want that? No, I would say Barry. I would say Barry and uh, Documentary Now. And then, you know what? A thing I'm really, is it things that you're proud of? You should know. I don't know. Wait, is it no, a thing I should be proud of, right? Psychic. I would say Barry, Documentary Now, and a movie I did called Skeleton Twins. So much, we could do a whole panel. What is that? Is that it? Oh. Right. Are you sure? Are you sure? Would you like to keep it? OK. Thanks. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, this is you sleeping. <laughs> you have a picture of John sleeping. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's very sweet. And thanks for being a good sport with us being a. Yeah, well, no, I, I, that's very sweet that you did. That, thank you for doing that, yeah. Um, and uh, do, I, I do, does anyone know the time? 620, good, all right, let's go. Hi, I'm Michael. Hi, Michael. Um, Bill, I have a question about Ronnie Lilly, back to that. So it's one of those episodes that you watch and you think like, wow, that was really special in a way that I can't explain. And you tell people, oh, you need to watch the show because of this episode, kind of like Pine Barrens for The Sopranos, yeah, totally. or, or Bojack with the underwater episode. But you can't, you have a really hard time explaining it. You can't tell people what you liked about it. So since I have the creator here, how do you explain what you liked about the episode or what you wanted to get people out of it or how did you explain it to your team? I mean, you just kind of, you don't know how it's gonna come out. You just have kind of like an idea and then you're just trying to see that idea through and you kind of are hoping it's gonna work and the tone is gonna work, but you're also kind of finding it as you're moving along, you know? Like the tone of it starts to kind of present itself. Initially, there's that long one shot of the fight that goes around the thing, and we had rehearsed that a couple of times where the camera was following them the whole time. And then we thought, well, what if they go out of frame and the camera starts to kind of slowly find them in a weird way that feels kind of more distant, and it's more like observing and kind of judging the fight rather than making it this kinetic thing. So just that made us go, oh, so when we shoot these earlier shots, let's make it a similar thing, almost kind of like a surveillance camera, just give it a tone. And then we had music in it, and I said, let's lose all the music. And we took all the music out, suddenly it gave it this other thing, you know? And so you're, you're that's the fun part of this, if you have a chance, is to kind of do it that way. And, um, and so, yeah, that, 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 that's, but you have no idea, you just, you just are kind of, and all, the, the biggest thing I will say with that episode is following the emotion of it, and that's kind of everything, the writing, everything, is those, when Barry has those flashbacks to see, coming to Fuchs and him realizing like, oh, Fuchs isn't good for him, he's being used, and he, it, it's, he's becoming much more aware of that, and especially the last shot where it's like, I could go to the cops or I could go with this guy, um, and the fact that that's a choice, you know? But again, it's kind of like I was talking about the, the acting, it's, it's more instinctual, you're just trying to be like, maybe it's this. So it never looks good when you pitch it. You're always like, I don't know, it's like a thing with the kid and it's like karate. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you guys just need to trust me. <laughs> so, I don't know. Hi, hi. Hi, um, my name is Lauren. Hello. And I'm here with my sister, Christina. And we used to really enjoy watching uh, Stefan. Oh, thank you. And <laughs> So we have since moved to New York from Maine, and we are wondering what his latest update was. Oh, oh, I don't know. What would, what, what's the thing that never made it on? Oh, God. Um, apocalypto. <laughs> the apocalypto squares? Uh, not that. It's like I, the apocalypto thing where the ass is covered by, by a square. square. Yeah. <laughs> the hardest John made me, one of the hardest things John made me laugh with, 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 was, with Stefan was, and it was, um, it was a two-year-old ultimate fighter, Julie Lips Jackson. He's got fists like empanadas, and he's addicted to ecstasy. That's what was Address. written. And then John changed it. And what you guys don't see is that it's written. That, and then so the cue card that says, you know, two-year-old uh, ultimate fighter, Julie Lips Jackson. He's got fists like empanadas, and cue card says, he's my best friend. <laughs> Yeah. 
the thing I, I would uh, try to explain to people, I was, it was always, uh, uh, was bo it, uh, the bodega sponges. And yeah. he'd go, what? And he goes, it's that thing of when you press the sponge to count the money at the <laughs> bodega. And people like high up there were like, don't put that in. No one will get that. And I didn't even we work did, here. We put a cat in a bodega, though, right? We did a cat in a bodega. A cat in a bodega was in We it. did a bodega bag that has a straw in it. Yeah. <laughs> also, like, guys with afros wearing graduation Racing caps. caps yeah. yeah. And, and, and have you heard, you know, Blackula, the Black Dracula? Oh, yeah, Black Dracula is the hardest I laughed at anything. Yeah, that was, that was the, the biggest, joke. that was the biggest, um, that was the biggest monkey wrench I've ever thrown in. It was a full joke. Yeah. That he because didn't know. Because it was like, hey, have you heard of, uh, hey, Seth, was, have you heard of Blackula, the Black Dracula? Yes. Yes. Well, you know, there's a Jewish one. What's it? What's, What's his, his name? name? Sidney Applebaum. <laughs> <laughs> and you, John wrote, and I just was like, oh, man. And that one got Seth, too. Seth was usually pretty, because what also made me laugh during those Stephons was how patient Seth Meyers was. Yeah. Like, now, really Stefan. Un, I mean, he was like, he did update. He always thought the guests would do what they promised to do. Yeah. And was genuinely disappointed that they were not doing, like, what he was they, always like, Garth and Kat, yeah, I invited you on I invited on you here. on here to do a thing. And it was, or when Fred would do uh, Patterson. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, it was always. You're like, Governor, can Governor, we can stop? Governor, can we please, like, New Jersey? Jersey. Yeah. And all that, yeah. What do you have against New Jersey? Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> a southern border. <laughs> yes, I'm like a, I'm like a blind, crack addicted governor of New Jersey. I'm, I'm like, a, a, I'm, New, I'm New York. I'm, I'm like, a, I'm, I'm, a, real... I'm like a, from a Richard Pryor movie. <laughs> the line was, and this was a different time. <laughs> you can't do I'm, that. I'm, I'm a blind black man who's done cocaine because as soon as he became governor, he said, I want everyone to know I've had affairs and I've done cocaine. And everyone was like, OK. Easy. <laughs> Who accidentally becomes governor of New York. My life is the plot of an actual Richard Pryor movie. <laughs> but that was a different time. Hello. Hi, uh, my name is Anna. Hi, and Anna. Actually, somebody has already uh, asked, and you answered the question I wanted to ask, but I have another one. Since I have a nice place in line, I don't want to give up. Um, <laughs> do you, if you guys like to read humor prose um, in just your everyday life, and if so, who are your favorite, just for pure, you know, the best written joke? Who are oh, your favorite wow. writers? Uh, you know, I like George. I like George Saunders. George Saunders is one of my favorites. Uh, I mean, David Sedaris. You can't really beat yeah, David yeah. Sedaris. Um, you know who's great at, at just pure jokes is Jack Handy. Those Jack yeah. Handy books. Jack Handy. Uh, I mean, Deep Thoughts or even the, the, he wrote a book called The Stench of Honolulu. That's really funny. Like just perfectly written jokes. And I have a kind of a weird answer, but not really because it's not. Um, <laughs> But like genuinely, like pure funny, Randy Newman lyrics are like, <laughs> if you go back to his album starting from 68, like he has songs that are like so goddamn funny and weird. Uh, anyway, you don't believe me, but go listen. Uh, hi, hi. Uh, Devin. Hi. Devin. Uh, so Bill, I think you, you kind of touched Devin? on it earlier. I think Noho what? Hank is kind of, you know, the breakout character of Barry. Who is? Uh, Noho Hank. What? No, oh, yeah. Am I, am I too <laughs> uh, how much of that is your, you know, direction, your plan, and how much of that is Anthony Carrigan? Well, Anthony Carrigan owns that character, and, and he got that because that character came from, I had to take my laptop to the, um, to the Genius Bar. I was writing the pilot, and my <laughs> laptop was messed up, so I had to go to the Genius Bar, and the guy at the Genius Bar was this kind of, like, Russian dude who was super tattoos, who was super nice, and I was grumpy. I was like, dude, this is the second time I'm back this week. He's like, I hear you. I'm sorry. I'm gonna make this work for you. Can I get you a coffee? Can I get you this? Can I do it? And he was so nice. And so then I started writing the pilot, and he fixed my laptop. So then I'm writing it again, and then I was like, oh, Goron has to have like a little sidekick. Well, I should write that guy from the. And so that's why he's always wearing polo shirts and stuff. <laughs> and the way that Anthony. 
got the part was the way he listened. He didn't have an accent. He started his audition by going, I don't, I don't have a Russian accent, but my girlfriend is Russian and she's gonna help me, but I don't, I don't have, I just got this call today. So we were like, all right. So he started doing it in his normal voice, but the way he listened, and if there's any actors in here, the way he listened got him the job. The way he was just. <laughs> <laughs> Like, him just listening and taking in and trying to be positive, but he was so present that we were like, yeah, that guy. So, and now he just, we just kind of like stay out of his way. Yes, hi. Uh, hi, I'm Alana. Hi, Alana. I know my friend and I have dressed up as Gil and George for Halloween. Is it weird to see people in your characters' costumes? Or is it like funny to you? Um, he might have more experience with it. Uh, there's been maybe half a dozen Gil and George. Uh, it's very, it's very fun. It's an easy costume, uh, the Gil and George costume. There are a lot of people dressed up like it was weird because people would dress up like on on documentary. Now we did uh, Grey Gardens, and oh. a lot of people would dress up like that. But we're like, oh, you're doing Grey Gardens, and they're like, no, we put pants on our heads. So that's, uh... <laughs> and then they sold a Stefan costume. Yes. Which we saw no money from. No. <laughs> No, we did not. Thanks for opening that old wound. <laughs> Hi. Uh, yeah, thank you. I was, that was a joke. Okay. Uh, I, she was like, Hi. I opened a wound. <laughs> Hi, I'm Isabella. Hi. Um, Hi. I have two questions, one for each of you. I guess I'll start with Bill. Actually, my friend Caroline up there, she's a huge fan of yours. So if you, I don't know, just say hi. Hi. <laughs> really big fan. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay, so mine's kind of a general question. You can make us do anything right now. Like, can you guys stand up and sit back down real quick? <laughs> I'm so excited for the young man after you because he's just pacing like Wednesday. Yeah, he's so nervous. <laughs> oh, now he's sweating. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Okay, so I have a general question. Like, how did you come up with the idea for this show? Because it's like really random and very specific. <laughs> So it's That's just, exactly like, what HBO said. What, like, what experiences are like... You're like, you are so random. Like, honestly, like... Because that's what I love about you, Bill. You're so random. That was the head of HBO said that. Because it's really random. <laughs> honestly, it is. Like, it's so random. The little boy just went, fuck! That was his question. <laughs> he tears his question up. Yeah, I'm ready. Pick me up. He's like... Now I don't want to take the train. <laughs> I'm not taking the fucking LIR. It's fucking raining. You pick me up, Mom. How'd you think of Barry? Uh, Alex Berg and I uh, were sitting at a diner and we had an idea for another show and we worked on that for like a year, like a, year a month. And did anybody, I did a, uh, this movie Hot Rod and it was basically my character from Hot Rod that we were doing a show based on that guy and it was terrible. And then uh, we said, uh, what if we did, and I said, what about, you know, like a hitman? And he went, ugh, a hitman don't exist in real life. Like I, and I go, but it would be me playing a hitman. And he was like, eh. And then very quickly we're like, he should take an acting class. And then like we were saying, oh, he takes an acting class and then blank and blank could happen. And then, and then that, th th that hasn't happened in the show yet. But, but, uh, but uh, it, I don't know, it kind of like, all the kind of good ideas, they just, it, I, don't, I don't know. They just pop in your head. You just kind of go, uh, well, like the Stefan stuff, it was like an email that you got and then like, yeah. uh, and then a coffee barista in Chelsea that I knew. And then and it like, was like, and us going, oh, what if that guy and that person went, to, you know. And like really liking it and being like, it won't work. Yeah. Yeah, usually when you're like, this will blow. Yeah. And, can you hear me? Can I can hear you, hear you. yeah, yeah. Just for John, like you're my idol. Oh, that's nice to Sorry. Say. No, no, but, he's my idol. Like I have, I brought my notebook that I have all my ideas in and stuff. And I was like, I didn't bring it down here. And I was wondering if you could sign it later if there's any time or. Uh, I will definitely, I would definitely try to. Uh, okay, yeah. thank you. Did you okay. make tarot cards for him? <laughs> idea like I'm kind of thinking Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nice thank you for saying that and I, I will try to nice to meet you hi what I am Alex you're uh, Alex I don't, yeah and I wanted to know like I think it was on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon where they said that JJ Binbider was angry because he never wore a cowboy hat and I wanted to know if there was a skit or stand-up a joke that was directed towards someone where they said that if you like if you make that joke again we're gonna have problems Oh, like, have you ever made oh. a joke? He was referring they, to a joke I made about yeah. a Chicago police officer that yeah, is not ever, happy about the content. Has there, have you ever made a joke where people get really mad that it's directed at them? Um, yes. <laughs> uh, 
It just happened recently. Um, y yeah. Uh, have you? Do you remember any that? that I remember. I would write like, shit where I, I remember to make jokes about people, and I always felt bad. I always remember some, but they're not fun to. Yeah, they're not about. fun to. Oh, I John Mayer got mad at me. <laughs> he did. <laughs> We did a thing about John Mayer and Jessica Simpson, and uh, and they were like when they were dating uh, before you were probably born, <laughs> and 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 it, and and it was about how they had nothing to talk about, and then he approached me and said, "Hey man, me and Jessica were we actually watched that and we got really bummed out," and I was like, "Well now you guys have something to talk about." <laughs> Hey. All right, here he is. All right, hello. Hi, Hi I'm Jack. Actually, this is uh, my friend Finn's question. Throwing <laughs> 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 uh, Finn under the bus. He's not even Finn. <laughs> he's not. Do you realize even. how nervous Jack has been? <laughs> He's not even here on his own. He's like, oh, God, Finn is uh, so fucking dead. I am Jack. Right. I'm okay. an introvert okay. myself, but I got a question from Finn here. What, uh, I guess, SNL sketches do you most uh, regret, maybe? <laughs> That's, That's Finn's, Finn's quest question? <laughs> Can you, you it's rephrased what? a little bit. What? Is it Finn? Oh, it doesn't matter. Is that what you want to ask? Yeah. All right. I love it. I love it, Jack. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot, yeah. Like, um, uh, poor kid. Yeah. Well, I won't talk about some that, you know, later someone would go, that was a little, like, offensive, because I feel genuinely bad about those. Yes, yeah, so um, there were some that were offensive that then we look back at and go, oh, man. You, we look we back immediately, and as the years have gone on, look back more so. Yeah. Uh, and truly, not, 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 not being uh, facetious about it, but um, the uh, one I s sort of don't regret, do regret, is uh, when we had uh, Cheech and Chong and uh, Peyton Manning <laughs> as their friend. Uh, <laughs> Okay, Jack, my... Jack, you asked. Jack, uh, we're going to take you back to 1978. <laughs> there was this comedy duo named Cheech and Chong. And they, uh, they were, were uh, silly. They were uh, silly. <laughs> they were Hispanic and they were silly. Yeah, and they would often act goofy. We thought it'd be funny if there had been a third member of their group that was played by uh, Eli Manning. Uh, it was very uptight. Uptight guy. Anyway, so we did it as one of these Turner Classic movies. Now, that's a channel, and what... <laughs> now, Jack, ba Jack, bear with us. Jack, he's on his phone. Now, a Jack. channel... <laughs> a channel is like... Uh, so, you know on the TV, there's that remote thing that your parents use? You know how... You know when it says Axios, so you could get cable, you know? That, the best thing about when we played that was that I made Fre uh, uh, Fred Armisen was really hard to break and he wouldn't laugh a lot and Fred laughed so hard in that sketch because when I would do Chong, my voice was really loud and, um, and they put us in this car and at dress they had, they had had the windows down but on air Lauren made them put the windows up for sound reasons. <laughs> So when I, so he's like, hey man, we gotta get out of here, you know, we gotta go. And I, the minute I talked, it was so loud in there. I was like, yeah, man, you know. And he started laughing, he jumped. <laughs> he was, he just started laughing. I will say, um, I never regretted them. I love these sketches very much, but someone once complimented, they were like, uh, I love Stefan, but like, you know, uh, what's it like to be on a show that does that kissing family? And I was like, oh, Bill and I write that. We wrote that. <laughs> yeah, no one likes the kissing family, but we... Uh, I love the kissing family. I loved family. it. My favorite thing on because, kissing family... Because your character... <laughs> John one time wrote, I go, oh, my character should have a dumb job, and we had something to dress and it didn't work. Yeah. And then I remember coming down on air, and I saw it for the first time, and I go, hey, how's it going? Hey, like I was all excited. And... <laughs> And my job, like it was like selling Christmas trees at dress. Yeah. Good. But then you said, yeah, I just got this job downtown breaking down boxes. <laughs> it was like a sketch for sketch writers, like, because it was so 
stupid. And people, and everyone on staff would be like, ugh, you're doing one of those? They were just like, those, you're just like, you're so stupid, you know? They, no one and, liked it And all. they would be like, this is so dumb. And we'd be like, we know that. That's why it's funny. Uh, <laughs> but then Fred would have to give a long speech. Fred Armisen is a, a man. He's a human. And, uh, <laughs> He'd have to give a long speech about why they are Vogel checks, and uh, he'd talk about, don't rub your eyes when I'm talking, and <laughs> he's, he, he went, <laughs> he went, he's like looking back like, you happy, Finn? This is what you wanted, after. <laughs> Finn. I wanted to see John Wick. <laughs> yeah. I was excited to see John Wick or Pikachu. Yeah. And we're with these two assholes. Yeah, now I'm talking to these two assholes. This guy's <laughs> doing the, this is your life over fucking here. Yeah. I ask one simple question and I get the yeah. war and peace. Uh, I mean, fucking, yeah. Two fucking sketches they're running through over here. That was 10 years ago, guys. I wasn't born yet. Move on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll wait for that. Hey, um, I'm Cameron. Nice to meet you guys. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Good. Good to hear. <laughs> I'd shake very hand, comfortable, but, apparently. <laughs> We're very comfortable. Um, so I'm hoping to uh, later in life like go down the same route of like stand-up writing, directing, oh, cool. or sketch comedy. Thank you. And um, I was wondering when you guys are starting from scratch, just like you know, haven't uh, written a set, haven't written anything like that. What's sort of your inspiration? Um, what's your creative process, and how do you? What's the proportion of like things that you write, ideas that you come up with, to what actually is put in the final product? You end up cutting a lot. Yeah. You end up cutting, but I, I mean, it comes from kind of any, you know, like, I don't know if we always talk about this, like the funniest I ever was was at like the lunch table in high school. Yeah. And it's that feeling when you get with friends where you're loose, you're not trying, you're not thinking. Like when John and I would write, like the first two hours is us just basically doing this, like we're not, we're like looking at yeah. YouTube videos and messing around. We'd get in the office at like noon on Tuesday and by 3 a.m. we'd be typing. Yeah. At the beginning but, would be like, you know. But that's why we would, we would work on Stefan. We would have to go off campus because we would just sit and like, we wouldn't do it. And then I remember one time, this is a poor example, is that we were trying to think of a club name and we looked over and there was this man, very serious, sitting with his young son. <laughs> and I looked over at him and John goes, your mother and I are separating. <laughs> and I was like, all right, so that's the club name. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, yeah, I mean, it's so much stuff. You have to be able to kill yeah. so much of it. It's like nothing, 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 nothing. Thank you. Like, you get, it really and everybody has the same thing. Everybody you talk to, they're like, oh, I didn't use that. I didn't do that. I, you know, be, but and everyone, every week, and still to this day, at the beginning of any project or any script or anything, everyone just goes like, I got nothing, I got nothing. So, you know. It, it, so it's, it's have fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, I, I see we're a adding people to the line, I know, and I think, I feel like uh, we should uh, wrap, we'll wrap it up soon, uh, yes. Oh, they're out, they are out. <laughs> That's, yeah, Jack's, yeah. that's Jack's parents, like, all right. Hello. He asked his question. We're leaving. Too many swear words. Can I talk now? Yeah, Are we course. good? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Hello, I'm Hi. Miles. Um, you were my birthday gift and my mom's Mother's Day gift. Oh, wow. Thank you. You're um, very welcome. So I thought you were going to talk to him first, so like everything went out of my head. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> um, right, that was, oh, hold you, on. You, okay, wait, okay. Um, I wanted to say to you, uh, I watch all your like Criterion collection stuff. Oh, cool. Which I feel like, I don't know, I just, it's really cool that you do all this comedy stuff that I've enjoyed for so long, but are also interested in like film, and oh, no one else you. does that. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> I, sorry. Um, what I wanted to ask is you're into a lot of dramatic stuff, yeah. and you've been doing like, you were in Skeleton Twins, which is sort of like a dramedy, and I'm wondering if you're ever sort of gonna try to go more of a dramatic route with filmmaking or acting or writing. Yeah, I mean, Barry's pretty dramatic. I mean, we try to, I mean, it's pretty dramatic. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty sad. Uh, I don't know, you know, it's just kind of case by case, you know? I mean, I think at SNL Forever, you were kind of doing the same kind of comedy and things like that, but like those Criterion movies, I mean, those are some of the best things 
ever made, you know, and you just, I always like to take, I always get, I don't know, you get like this where it's like there's so much stuff to watch and so many things to listen to and see that I'm like, am I watching this because I want to watch it or am I watching this because I want to be a part of a conversation or what is this, you know, and so it's kind of nice to be like, no, I'm going to watch American Friend. Oh, wow, we're getting pulled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Wait, see. Okay. Okay. I have some terrible news. <laughs> President Trump. I'm President Trump. <laughs> I, was to, I was going the same place. Like, President Trump. We're yeah. going to wrap it up in, in two. Two and, more uh, questions. So we're moving a little fast. Uh, very nice. Happy birthday. Hi. Hi, I'm Scott. This is a qu uh, question for John. Um, and all three of your specials are very tall. <laughs> Your like material has been so airtight and fleshed out, but I never see you on like the store or seller's Instagram. Where do you work your material at? Do you do it at clubs or just like on the tour? Store and the seller, uh, <laughs> and I, uh, I, I, I do, uh, I do comedy clubs, yeah. And I've been doing um, some shows with Pete Davidson, where we each do like a half hour. But doing a half hour is nice because it's not like a, the pressure of an hour, and uh, yeah. But uh, I perform at those clubs. Um, I just, uh, I guess they don't put me on their Instagram. <laughs> That's weird. Hello. Hey, how are you? My name is Diane. Diane, Hi. this might be the final question. So if it could be great, that'd be fantastic. OK. It's got to be good. It's a lot of pressure. OK, my question's for John. Uh, actually, it's two questions, but I promise it's really quick. Um, do you plan on going on tour anytime soon? Uh, Second question, did. No. I mean, it'll, um, be, uh, it'll be later in 2020. Okay. okay. And did uh, Jake McNamara ever um, oh, yeah. come after you that after joke, the special? I, I did a joke about a teacher whose house we trashed in high school, and that teacher is not happy with me. And <laughs> I did an interview with my high school paper, and, and I, I, like, you know, I was like, hey, when are they going to send it, you know? And uh, I, I was like, yeah, when are they going to send me the paper? And then I, like, checked, and it was like, there was no interview. <laughs> And I, call, and I emailed, I was like, hey, where, hey, where's the interview? And they were like, a teacher apparently stepped in and said that uh, they cut it from the thing. Whoa. So, well, yeah, and now I just realized it's Juicy, streaming. Yeah. juicy gossip. Well, Barry is on HBO, and in closing, I... Uh, in closing, I... I uh, would you like to do your Burt Lancaster? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do your Burt Lancaster, and no matter what you think of it, greet it with deafening applause. No. Oh, uh, Burt, Burt Lancaster, which one? What, the... Uh, Oyster? Uh, muffin. Muffin? Muffin. Oh, yeah. Uh, the guy, this is a true story. Larry David told me that a guy went up to Burt Lancaster's house, <laughs> and um, he's a writer, and he knocked on the door, and uh, he opened the door, and Burt Lancaster was there in a robe. And he went, Muffin Bob? <laughs> and then he said, Some juice, perhaps. 